We're another week done into the FTC decode season, and there's been some awesome robots made. And what's cool about this role is they have a functioning spin indexer already set up inside their robots. Today, we're going to take a look at some fast intakes, some iterations, and then quite a few fully finished robots as the qualifying tournaments start coming up. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. Now that one of the best ways to improve your own design is to take a look at what other people are doing. First up, we've got 12736 from Decode. They've got a surgical intake tubing. Uh, there's a few interesting things that I want to note about this one in that they are showing us that they can prevent backspin by having this rotate around. So they can obviously rotate it back. So they can see that it actually seems to be pretty reliable at being able to keep a ball from outside. Another thing that I do like here is looking at their different measurements on this point. We can take a look at how much compression they want. So they've made a large point here so they can have different settings and do some pretty quick testing. I would assume just by rotating that large gear. So that's pretty cool. Nice job on that one. Electric Mayhem. Next up, we've got another one here from the Bronto Byte FTC. And they, again, have a spinning intake here. It's always a little concerning when I see people holding onto axles uh, with just their hands, even if it is a, a quick prototype. I'd be amazed at how much torque can go into some of those motors. Uh, and we can see just how successful a rubber band intake is. It looks like they've wrapped it around the back of their wheel and then pulled up onto the other side. And the cool thing about this intake is that they are actually capable of holding three balls uh, inside. I'm not quite sure how they're going to force this up into the turret, but this is a great start. And it's also quite a wide intake as well in front, uh, in the middle of both their mechanism wheels here. Excellent prototype on that. Next up, we've got one here from the, I believe this is FTC 23511. I think it's the Seattle Solvers. They have a, another intake here, uh, and it's a couple different compliant wheels running on a few different belts. Uh, and it looks like it also pivots or has a bit of compliance as a ball comes in as well. Uh, and it's pretty quick at launching that ball straight up in that little scoop. It looks like it would scoop it up and into the turret. Uh, one thing I wonder about this that they haven't quite shown is how many balls is this capable of holding inside? This may only be a one or two ball intake. And uh, it's not clear in the video uh, here whether they can pause just one section of the intake if they just want to pause a ball in the middle. Uh, and I know that they're running this all in one. I would wonder if I'd want to put some sort of hard stop on the point. So this intake works quite well. It picks things up quite fast. Uh, one thing I'm curious, or another thing I'm curious about is just how quickly do we have to be able to pick these things up? And what's more important is to be able to hold those balls inside to be able to then rotate yourself around. I'm sure they're already thinking about this, but other teams might want to be thinking of this as time goes by in the future. Next, we're going to take a look at some shooters here. We've got team 25475 from Technostorm. So let's take a look at their shooter here. And the reason I wanted to show off this shooter here is that they have a polycarbonate sheet. And let's see if we can get a shot of when it actually launches off. I want you to watch the back of this polycarbonate shooter uh, in that curve section right there, right behind that motor. So we'll go back and look at that a few times. And you can see that the back of their polycarbonate shooter is bouncing quite a bit. And obviously, this is a rough prototype. But I think that's also one of the things to think about is how rigid you want that back to be. And maybe a little bit of compliance in the back may be beneficial design. It may be unbeneficial to design or maybe detrimental to design. I'm not quite sure yet, but my guess would be that if you have a lot of flex in that design, that it might promote less consistency in your shots. But as a rough prototype, getting ready for a competition, great start there. Then we've got the Comet bots here. Uh, I want to show this off because <laughs> I, I love the rapid iteration here where they just have some quick clamps holding it onto the side to be able to launch it up into the sky here. And the cool thing about this one is it's just a lot of quick prototyping. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whether teams rotate their entire turret. And I think that's not a bad way of being able to change your angle by rotating your entire platform. Next up, we've got Team 24070. We saw these guys before, but I think what's interesting about this is that they have pretty high throughput through their shorter. So you're capable of shooting three balls in under a second, which is actually quite high consistency and quite a high throughput. So you can definitely have 
a couple of different flywheels running together and have solid speed to be able to push these through. So they will be able, capable of holding three. And they're capable of launching three. It's also quite a skinny robot, uh, which is also something that I think is interesting to see. I'm not quite sure where the meta is going to go on whether you want a really wide intake at the front to be able to pick up as many artifacts from as many different positions as you want, or whether it's easier to have your human player pop three of those things in, where it's easier to have a really skinny robot so that you're more likely to be able to have two robots fit inside of that robot base uh, and less likely to be able to be hit by other robots as you play some of that defense. So nice job on that one, 24070. Uh, next up, we've got Universal Transformers FTC, uh, and they've got another uh, great little shooter here design here. Uh, and it's got a quick little intake on the inside, and it is just looks like it's capable of holding a single, maybe two, oh yeah, two balls it can hold inside there. Um, so we're starting to see some teams actually get some more functioning prototypes. Oh, almost three balls. We're starting to get some teams having some more functioning prototypes going into those qualifiers, and this is great to see to be able to give your programmers enough time, especially because a decent chunk of teams already have qualifiers coming up in the next uh, three weeks. So it's definitely something to think about make sure your team has something. This is Capybottas. Uh, and the, what's cool about this design is they're using Andy Mark's rotating turret on the inside. Looks like they've had some laser cut compliance to fit some other things or laser cut plates to be able to sit things on top. You can't see it from this angle, but I really like their little uh, servo that just kicks it up and into their turret. It's really simple uh, and it seems to be working quite well for them, provided that their intake is capable of placing it in this position every single time. Looks like it's pretty reliable, kicks it up straight up into that their intake, and they're able to launch out from both the far distance and my guess is also the close distance. So nice job on this one, Capybottas. Very cool little design. And then lastly, we've got some different robots to actually take a look at. Uh, we've got 26562 MechTech. And they have taken the Rev starter bot and they've added in a couple of different mechanism wheels. Uh, and I think this is a great way for teams to get a little bit easier way of turning and locating things on and still being able to score points pretty rapidly. Especially for rookie teams, I want to highlight that you can make some simple changes and have a competitive robot at your first qualifier. Then we've got team 30,800. This is the rookies of ITCAN. Uh, and uh, I, I think this is a great looking little bot. It's nice and quick, probably using 435 motors on their drivetrain and fast enough they're not launching their edges off there. Uh, and a nice wide intake. I like that ramp. I like the compliant wheels are quite wide to be able to pick things up from different sections. And they've got this little angle that's able to flush the artifacts back up. One thing I am well, not concerned about, but I think after the first qualifier might be something to think about is the ability to intake more than just two balls at a time. Uh, you might find more success if you're capable of holding up to three because it looks like as it holds itself in there, it's probably going to struggle to be able to pick up a second or even a third ball on this one. And then we've got team 24,527. Uh, here, I believe this team is from Brazil. And I, this is a great example of using a hopper design and a, a quick little boot kicker on the back there. We can see it's just got a little servo that pushes it quite through. Uh, and it's got pretty good throughput to be able to launch itself up from the back. Uh, and I want to share this one off because I think it's really cool to be able to see a design that uses a human uh, intake. And I think that a lot of teams, especially in that first qualifier, the ability to have both options, be it a human placing them into your robot or be it a robot being able to pick it up off the floor, having that flexibility is going to be huge. But especially in that first qualifier, being able to just score points is really important. And I don't think that enough teams are, I think I'm seeing a lot of teams ignoring the ability of humans to be able to place things into the robot. And that's such, such an easy way to get things onto your robot at the start of the season. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being able to score those points. As we can see, you can have some really successful designs by having a large hopper in there. Then we've got Team Tech Attack. We've seen these guys before on their robot in three days, and they've made some improvements to their design uh, since then. Uh, it's a much, much larger boot kickers, uh, and it looks like it's pretty successful to be able to pull that in and then launch itself right up. And they've got this little sweeping arm at the start there so they can, actually, I guess it's more like a gate that's moving up and down parallel. So it's able to bring balls in, launch them up, and then be able to keep going. Great little design on that tech attack. I'm really curious to see where it is that you continue to bring this design on in the future.
Next up, we've got team 5237 loose screws. And this is a great little design. I like the turret in that it is, it's a circle laid around so that the ball is on a nice little curved surface and it keeps it in a nice uh, located position. We've got a little bit of compliance on the front of that boot kicker intake, which is great. And you can see that they're, they've got their first robot done. And the thing I liked about this is when they commented on laying this out, this is their first robot getting ready for the qualifier. And now they're giving their programmers lots of time. So I think they only had two or three weeks, if I remember the comment correctly. Uh, so the programmers have lots of time to be able to work on this robot. And it doesn't mean that their build team is done, but it does mean that they're going to be able to give themselves a lot of iteration time. I also like they've given themselves a tape on the ground so they can get used to where is the ideal place for me to be able to launch that robot from, from some of our testing. Nice work on that team. Next up, we've got team 24557. I believe this is another team from Brazil. And what's cool about this role is they have a functioning spin indexer already set up inside their robot. So we can see this rotating down from the bottom. And they've got a second view of this robot set up here where they've got so quite a large boot kicker set up. Going in the middle here, it's able to launch itself into one of these three little sections, spin around, and then kick it back up into their intake turret. Super cool design. Awesome to see having a functioning indexer already set up. And it's quite quick to be able to pull these designs in. One thing I'm curious about is, is there a way that they could move their intake perhaps a little bit closer to the front of the robot so they get a little wider section? Because their, their intake section's quite narrow right now and you need to have that ball. You probably only have about one and a half artifacts lengths at that section. And it might be a little bit easier to be able to pull this in if they had a bit of a wider section. Again, this isn't something they need to do right now, but it is something you think about in the future. And clearly this is an excellent design. It's already working quite well. And you can see on their turret, they've got one main flywheel and they have another little daughter wheel up at the top to be able to cancel out some of that backspin that'd be able to get to pull things up. Uh, this is already a pretty amazing design and to be working as well as it is in uh, just a few weeks is some seriously impressive work. Nice work on that 24557. We've got 26,059 as well. I love seeing MDF and uh, plywood or multiplex at a design as you come in for that first competition. Overall, this robot seems to be working quite well. Just a little simple intake, a little simple channel, and lots of space to be able to pull this thing. It's nice and wide for that first competition, not a problem. Uh, some things that might help in the future might be shorting it up a little bit or being able to make that section a little bit more compliant on the outside as well. And then last up, we've got uh, Astra Machina here, where they have a, a 12 uh, robot artifact off of Autonomous. Super impressive work to already have uh, this much of an Autonomous setup. Uh, they've also taken the time to done a, a full aluminum chassis on this one. Uh, and one thing I will say about using full aluminum chassis on this is you're going to have to find some way to produce a little bit of anti-static protection from other robots or differential charge events from other robots because i think you might run into some issues where you have robots clamping into each other things resetting and then devices not working the way you'd expect them to be working it's great to have a 12 point artifact auto already set up as well super impressive work one and it's good to have this set up to be able to put it in one thing i wonder is this works well if your teammate doesn't have an autonomous and I wonder how their, how their autonomous period might shift if they decide to put in another partner who has something else. So I wonder if they have a six in the front and a six in the back section also programmed up so they can make them a little bit more adaptable with their other teammates as well. So I'm curious what you think of these designs and how your team is doing. Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to get access to more robotics resources, uh, you can consider joining the community down below. Otherwise, best of luck out there to your team this season.